New Deal or No Deal by Rao Rampila. 42nd Street Public Library. Rao is looking for the original text of Civil Disobedience by Henry Thoreau. He suddenly recognizes an attractive female with reading glasses. It's right after Christmas and people are coming back from the New Year's Eve parties at Times Square. Is that you, Kathy? Who? It's me, Rao. Oh, oh my God, Rao! How have you been? Long, 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 long time. But it feels like yesterday I recognized you the moment I walked in. The hairstyle, the face, and the glasses. You haven't changed very much. Well, you look the same. But it's hard to recognize you at first glance because now you're dressed like a Westerner. Tell me a little bit more. How are you? Good. How are you? Let's. Hmm. Shh. Shh. Let's get out of here. How about some chai and samosa? They make a good chai in Little India. I'm very far from here. I know where Little India is. Shall we? They come out of the library on 42nd Street and 5th Avenue. Kathy hails for a taxi. She shows her leg up. Okay, let me do it my way. Taxi! <laughs> taxi! The taxi, taxi! Stops. The taxi stops. They hop in. All right, boys up. Hello, Little India, 28th and Lex. They hop out at the corner of 28 and Lex. They're sitting in an Indian daba, a, con a common Indian restaurant that most cabbies go to. I never thought I would see you again. You are so suddenly. Things happened and I, I didn't have time. I still remember our first meeting. You were new to the dorm and all my Indian friends pushed me to go talk to you saying, well, you are the one that knows all these foreigners. <laughs> I mean, they were referring to my Swiss friend Martin. I was shy and didn't know what to say, and I came up to you and said, do you think you would ever marry an Indian man? <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, I remember that. No one's ever said that to me before. You charmed me. Mm -hmm. And you went away to Sri Lanka and came back. My Swiss friend tried to talk to you, and you admired him and came straight to me and showed me the sari that you bought in Sri Lanka. I thought you looked so beautiful for that. All the guys were jealous. Do you know I was not attracted to you far ago until I met you? How come? Well, you are special. Besides, you look like a native girl with such a beautiful face. That's why when I saw that face in the library, I immediately know it was you. No, oh, I see. You've never told me that. It didn't matter as long as you like I like you. Remember? He used to take me on a scooter to Sapru House Library and then go around and around around the Connaught Place in the evenings in New Delhi. But then you suddenly vanished. I didn't vanish, Rao. I left a note for you on your dorm door as I was leaving on an important scientific mission. And there was no time. You know how much I get consumed by my science projects. Well, we always talk about your projects. But leaving like that? I know. But it's not like... You and your politics for the untouchables. I mean, Dallas. You know, I was willing to die for the cause. Well, I'm not going to die for science. But it is something I have to do. It's for my father. I made a promise to find a cure for cancer. Oh, uh, I didn't know about your promise to your dad. You didn't get my note? Yes, uh, I kept the, like, the little gold diamond in my wallet. You know, after I came here, and I looked for it everywhere. All required Google, the number you gave me linked to another number, and so on and so forth, and finally no trace. I am sorry. I was in such a hurry and I was expecting your call, but we kept moving from one place to another, and I thought you were mad at me. There were no cell phones those days, you know. You still have it, Sari? Yes. It was our first date. That kid in Sri Lanka sold it to me, saying I would look like a movie star in that sari. I knew he was making it up, but 
I wanted to show you how much I liked your culture. Just my culture, huh? <laughs> What about me in movie store? Oh, come on. <laughs> you never change. You're like the same old, same old. You won't skip the subject now. Well, I adore you. You're always protesting, and I constantly worry about what would happen to you next, even when I was out there. Well, they finally kicked me out of the university, and I came and settled here. Boy, you are a rebel. <laughs> are you still a rebel rouser? Once a rebel, you're always a rebel. What about you? It's a long story. How long? Very long. Well, I have all the time in the world. I stumbled into a team of scientists, and we went up to the Himalayas in caves. And then we traveled to several places in Europe and America. Well, anyway, to make it short, I finally ended up in Harvard, MIT group. As far as I remember, were you a doctor with Ames, or All India Institute of Medical Sciences? Yes, I was. But edit editing the genome structure excited me. So I mixed biology with computer technology and experimenting modifying genes. They call it CRISP. Have you heard about it? Yeah, I saw your program on PBS, but I don't know how much about it. Well, I had differences with the group, and I started my own research right here in New York City. Really? Yeah. <laughs> OK, so I got to show you something, but not here. That's if you have time. Are you? all the time. Well, this is serious. I mean, it's private and confidential. We can't talk about that here in public. And, and you can't tell this to anyone. Well, it's a promise then. My lips are sealed. My heart is open. <laughs> There's no kidding about this, Brown. You know me. You can trust me on this. Besides, I never want to lose you again. You never change. You know, you're the same old, same old. Let's go. Where are we going? To the village. How about the subway ride? Hey, that's me. I'm a New Yorker. Huh? They both hop on a subway and get off at Astor Place and come out and then walk towards NYU. They walk through the Washington Square Park in Greenwich Village and Rao notices a falafel place. There's a big billboard up above the place, the Village Noise. Kathy, do you know this is where hippies used to hang around in the 60s? Yes, I do. <laughs> Actually, I know. I, I live under the shop in the basement. You live in the basement? Yes. They walk down the steps. Welcome home, honey. Wow. What a surprise. I can't imagine you being a hippie. But you're not always a hippie at all, though, you know. You are a romantic at heart, aren't you? Hey, what can I say? A romantic Indian with a hippie girl. She opens the door. And there's a dome-like structure, like a pyramid. Are we entering a pyramid, Kathy? You're not sleeping with mummies, are you? Step back. She then uses a device from her handbag and pushes the button. Suddenly, the door unfolds itself like a flower, and they enter through a doorway. Wow. Are you OK? How could you do that? Is this the Paradise Lost? No, it is Paradise Regained. This is my laboratory. As Rao curiously explores the laboratory with several rats, he finds historical names written on them, and within them are some ball embryo-like specimens. This could be the historical figures world section of any famous library. Rao tries to touch them. Don't touch anything. Why not? Remember my travels and excavations? These are the specimens collected from those travels all over the world. Yeah, that's how I lost you to these specimens. Well, these specimens are the work of a lifetime. Now, what do you do with them? Well, they contain invaluable DNA from my research. Some I'm trying to modify them, and some I'm trying to recreate them, bringing them back to life using that DNA. That is impossible. Did you used to say there was nothing impossible in this world? Yeah, if one man can do it, I can do it too. I know I said that, and I still believe that. This is different. But how do you recreate these historical figures using their genome through modification? Modifying these historical figures is a treachery. I know. That is why I split away from the others. Others wanted to modify them. I just wanted to regenerate them just for the heck of it. So have you been successful? Yes and no. Oh, what do you mean? I was only temporarily able to regenerate them for a split second. Kathy. Uh, that's wonderful. Even if they come back alive temporarily, it is still good, right? Yeah. They can be helpful. But tell me how to regenerate them. You devil! <laughs> I know.
know you. I know what you're thinking. What? Don't even think about it. But you know me. I never use anything for personal gain. But tell me. Are you a I knew I should have never brought you here. Then why did you? Trust me. Your secret is safe with me. Promise? I promise on my mother. Okay. I believe you. I know you're a good man. Well, you see that syringe? Yeah, uh, can I inject myself? In oh. theory, yes. Temporarily, you become someone else. What if if I inject those balls, um, I mean embryos? They come alive temporarily with a thunder and vanish. Great. Rao pulls a syringe written as Lincoln and begins to inject himself. Four scores and seven years ago, our forefathers... Kathy rushes in and pulls out the syringe. What are you doing? That's awesome! Didn't I tell you not to touch anything? No, I'm sorry. You're not ready yet. It's a work in progress. I need help. It's for a cause. For the good of the people, and for the good of the country, and for the good of this world. What are you up to this time? It's not what I'm up to. Rather what Mr. Trump, I mean, the President Trump, is up to. That's very dangerous. Yes, no, 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 no. It could be very simple. I believe he needs to be engaged in a dialogue and discussion. Think of it as educating Trump. Dummies for Trump, 101. How are you going to do that? Rao points to the lab and the specimens and the injector. Your head. No, 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 no. That is not going to work. It's still experimental. Besides, I didn't do this for politics. What then the science is for? But to help and save the world. That's your cup of tea, not mine. Now, what is mine is yours. Picasa, Picasa. Don't you run that Spanish on me? What happened to your Indian? What, you're a Spaniard now? But Kathy. No, no, no. There's no but Kathy. Brown, don't do that to me. After all these years, we just met again. Let's enjoy the moment. Can we talk it over the dinner? I make my South Indian special for you. Eggplant, green beef fry, potato curry, chicken masala. Row, row, row! Kathy, Kathy, Kathy! You're driving me crazy. It was so peaceful here before you came. I see. You don't want me anymore. I should have known. Okay. I leave you in peace. No, I, I, no not like that, Rao. That's not what I mean. Then what do you mean, Kathy? I thought. I meant something to you. You mean something to me. Don't drive me into politics. It's not politics, Kathy. I made a promise to my father to eliminate cancer from this world. But there are different kinds of cancers. Some we don't see. Don't manipulate me, Rao. I know your legal and political acumen. It's not my acumen, Kathy. Please think of how those poor souls in India are here too. Think of the legacy of the ancestors in those specimens. Think of history. I know all of that. Think of your father and those lives that may die because they don't have medical insurance. The promise to my father is personal. Everything is personal in this world. You have to put yourself in that situation. I am not like you, Rao. Think how happy your father would be for this. You don't know that. Besides, you don't even believe in your own religion. Think of me. Do it for me, Kathy, please. You're a troublemaker. <laughs> there is no trouble. It's just man to man talk with Trump. Mono e mono. If only you can get me in and out of the Trump Tower, nobody will know and nobody will find out. I can't afford to put you in danger. There's no danger. We will be under camouflage using those embryos and syringe. I will transform into this personal aid and you will become. Kelly and Conway, uh -huh. and all you have to do is watch for me. Why do I have to talk with uh, Mr. Trump on national and international issues? Mano e mano. Oh, that's still dangerous, Rao. I don't want to lose you again. Nothing to lose, everything to gain, Kathy. You won't lose me if you do that. Otherwise, I will force myself into the Trump Tower, whether they like it or not. Just don't do any crazy stuff. Let me fine-tune my experiments. Why do you fine-tune your experiments? Should I make some spaghetti with meatballs? Or do you prefer my curry in hurry? How about some red wine? Or do you prefer Taj Mahal, your favorite beer? Huh? <laughs> you really are a charmer. Hey, I come from the land of the snake charmers. <laughs> well, here are some Italian wines. 
and some Taj Mahals in the refrigerator. Mm. Rao gets up and brings some Taj Mahal beers, knowing full well that she likes it and sets it on the table. Will you pour that into my glass? Oh. I have forgotten my good manners. Uh -huh. <laughs> Toast. Toast. Power to the people. You're crazy. It's only because of you. They both drink and eat spaghetti with meatballs and disappear into the lab. Over the next several days, they work day and night in the lab. It was very frustrating. All this time, Rao has been strapped to the experimental table to make sure that he wouldn't go crazy with all the experiments. It's been a week. <coughs> it's not working, Rao. We almost spent a whole week. According to the Bible, God created all life in seven days. I am not God, Rao. Me neither, but I never met him. <laughs> oh, God, you're funny. She leaves a syringe next to him, and Rao picks it up and shoots himself. Hail Hitler! Hail Hitler! Hail Hitler! Oh my god! What are you doing? Rao accidentally kicks the turmeric powder container lying nearby. <coughs> it spills and covers all the embryos, including the syringes. So he unstraps himself and tries to clean off the turmeric powder on the syringe named for Indian leaders. And to make sure it still works, he injects himself again. He turns into an Indian leader. It's not temporary anymore. Kathy rushes in and is amazed. Eureka! They both hug each other, happy in tears and dancing in celebration. Next day, they make a plan to enter Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue. Act Two. It's Trump Tower, Fifth Avenue, New York City. Trump's private apartment. Beautiful tapestry abounds. Trump's bedroom. Trump has dozed off. Rao enters the Trump bedroom and injects himself and turns into the first Prime Minister of India. I'm the first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. Aren't you dead? Yes, I am dead. Am I dreaming? Good idea. Yes, you are dreaming. But I came back to advise you. What can you advise? I know everything. I have huge towers in Bombay, and I'm going to build my towers all over India. Make you all rich. Ask your... your, your Prime Minister M M M M Modi. Modi, Modi. How is, how is that going to solve the problems of India? Huh? You know, huge Hollywood stars are buying up apartments in my towers. That creates work for the poor in India. Mr. President, the problems of India are much more bigger than that. I'm the one that introduced the five-year plans for India to develop economically. Yeah, I yeah, know. Look where it is now. We came a long way. And it was modeled on East USSR five-year plan. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. You're missing the point. Imagine all those towers shining high in golden frames in every city in India. Yeah. Besides, Putin is a good friend of mine. A very, very good friend. President Franklin Roosevelt walks in. What the hell is going on? First May room and then to this? Not to worry, Mr. President. I'm here to help you. I don't need your help. I'm the president now. I'm going to build towers all over the world and make America great. Yes. But what about at home, Mr. President? Why, plenty of towers in New York City. And what about affordable housing for the middle class? At least there used to be a middle class when I was alive. Oh, that was what I was talking about. Zanero, it's my turn. We're talking about the U.S. here. Well, I'm going to give tax breaks to the rich and to the big U.S. corporations. You don't have a lot of friends who are billionaires. They will build the economy. At least when I was alive, I created a safety net for all unemployed, especially coming out of the Depression. Yeah, I'm going to build infrastructure, roads, bridges. Yes, that's a good idea, Mr. President. <coughs> Where are you going to find money? Especially if you give away money to the rich through tax breaks. Uh, don't worry, I'm smarter than you are. I'm going to tax everyone. You're going to tax the poor? 
Give it to the rich. It's not in my dictionary. Your thinking is updated, Mr. President. Takes the commodities, the goods, comprende? Whoa! What in the hell? We see Martin Luther King walk in. <laughs> no hell, Mr. President. I come from the mountaintop and from heaven. I have a message for you. Listen, guy. You're respectable and all that. Uh, but I take my advice from, from Carson, who's in my cabinet. Uh, you weren't even on my short list. Uh, though I could have invited you to pose for the cameras. <laughs> Brother Kanye West was here. At least you should have a show like mine. Apprentice. Keep going, you and your Twitter and TV. We shall overcome all that jazz someday. Don't you forget the power of Twitter. <laughs> oh, I'm so good at it. Can't you see? Let's cut to the chase and come to the point. Huh? What are you going to do for black people? Hmm. You gotta do something? You gave them equality, didn't you? And Obama's leaving the White House. I'm getting in. I could offer him a job. At least you at, at least you know that much. We fought for equality. But has there been and would there be any equality in your regime? Your policies would affect our people. How are you going to ensure affirmative action and social justice that we fought for so dearly? Yeah, that's safe with me. I appointed a billionaire who believes in chartered schools. Yeah, what, about what about public education? Are you going to destroy public education? I heard the colleges are for the rich and the wealthy. It costs $50,000 a year for tuition alone, let alone boarding and other expenses. Have you forgotten we live in a capitalist world? <laughs> As a charity, we'll give Trump scholarships. Hmm? Have, have you heard about Trump University? Oh, that's right. I settled that one. I could have won that suit, but for my presidency. Everyone needs to be educated if we are to have an equal and white oh. society, no matter your race and color. That's right, Dr. King. We should have free college. Oh, I wish I was still the president. At least we subsidized education. And we gave scholarships to everyone. Students were not indebted for the rest of their lives. There wouldn't be student slaves either in the land of my dreams. Yeah, keep dreaming, guys. <laughs> Nothing is free in my dictionary except the tax breaks I give to my rich friends. Whoa! We see a Native American chief, Sitting Bull. Whoa! It's Sitting Bull! Don't be scared, Mr. White Eagle. You ain't no custer. Promises were made, gifts were exchanged, and treaties were signed, but the white man always cheats. Our land was stolen. What about health and education for our people that you promised under the treaties? Well, I didn't make those promises. Everybody got to work. But there's utter poverty on the reservation. There are no jobs. Don't you have casinos like I do? <clears throat> of course, I have the big ones. <laughs> I have a lot of Indian friends in that line of business. <clears throat> Don't you know how to use bankruptcies? I, I could give you a referral to my lawyer. We are the original landlords of this country. You haven't paid your rent to us. This, this is too much for me to handle. Talk to my lawyer, will you? You signed away the land, didn't you? Every time we sign anything, we lose our land and sovereignty. It's in the past, isn't it? To have casinos, we have to sign away our sovereignty to the state we're in. Oh, I wish I were alive. I'd teach those custers a lesson. General Custer is dead. <laughs> no more lessons to learn. Now you wage a different war, white man. You are evil. You're frocking Mother Earth for your greed and profit, bringing that Dakota pipeline to our sacred lands. Don't you even listen to your own Army Corps of Engineers? I am the Commander-in-Chief, big fella. You know how that goes. It's all business. <laughs> That's how I'm going to create big, big jobs. Me, huge jobs. My land alone. And what about climate change, President Trump? Psst. I look through my Fifth Avenue window. Climate is fine. This climate change is a big hoax. <laughs> I'm going to talk to my intelligence officers about that. Intelligence? Do you mean a scientific team? I'm going to set up a big, big commission with my Republican friends. I'm going to build a big wall near the border that neither climate nor Mexicans can enter illegally, and I'm going to make this country great again. But Mother Earth is universal. You can't have borders for climate. Yeah. Climate change, it's not scientifically proven. 
Ask any of my Republican Congress and Senate. Those Mexicans you call illegal are our brothers. They used to roam around this land freely before the white man came. Free ingress and egress was promised to us by your white fathers in the J Treaty. That's baloney. I don't make such promise. It's the media doing this to rule against me. Besides, all those coming in are thugs and gangsters. I'm going to build that big wall with Mexican money, huh? <laughs> and the jobs will be safe here, except the ones who work below wages for me. Yeah, they work under inhuman conditions. That's another reason that I brought in the New Deal. Oh, yes. Those Mexicans, they just look like us. What a pity that this vast country can't keep few Latinos. We are smaller in geography, but bigger and bustling with 1.2 billion people. We even sheltered Dalai Lama. There you go again, Mr. Nehru. If you talk too much, I'm going to cut outsourcing those call centers. I know these things, Mr. Trump. That's why during my time, I made sure every foreign enterprise in India has to transfer technology to us so that we will be independent of foreign influence. That is the measure of true independence. Believe me, we are no Argentina. Your Prime Minister Modi is a good friend of mine, Mr. Nehru. I'm going to build more towers in India. I want to stop sending American jobs away, and I'm going to make America great again. America was great even before me and you. Hmm. Why do you have all your billionaires in, in, why do you have all those billionaires in your cabinet, President Trump? Those are the ones that are exporting jobs for the cheap labor and profit. It used to be European countries, but now it is the corporations that are exporting, exploiting the third world. Well, isn't it the American farming company, Mr. Trump? that are bringing the cheap labor from Mexico? No, that's why I'm going to build this big wall with Mexican money around the border. Oh, it all comes down to wall, just like your Wall Street, Mr. White Eagle. We fought for this country. Don't you remember your friend, Reagan? He asked Gorbachev, tear down that wall, Mr. President. Why are we spending so much money on the military? There is no USSR. There's no Cold War. There's no Warsaw Pact. Didn't you promise that you would cut down the money we give to NATO? Are you going to keep that promise? Look, fella, I'm a businessman. I promise a lot of things. That's why I'm appointing uh, President of Exxon as Secretary of State. But do you know Exxon violated human rights in Nigeria and elsewhere and controls the oil economies? It spilled oil all over. There's no proof of that. He got a good birth certificate that he's born to good people in America. Besides, he makes deals with Russia. Putin is a good friend of mine. Then, then why are you so harsh on Cuba? Cuba? It's not my deal, fellas. It's Obama's deal. Besides, I don't see any casinos or towers in Havana. I'm scrapping all those Obama deals with a stroke of my pen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trump's pens in gold, like my towers. <laughs> I'm going to put it in Ivanka's name. <clears throat> it's very, very bad what they did to her merchandise. Scrubbing health care with that pen is disastrous, Mr. President. This country needs a single payer system. Without universal health care, poor people, black and white, in all shades, would have a hard time and may even die. And don't I know, Mr. King? <laughs> All those that voted for me, I'm not going to leave them astray. But nothing comes free from me. Ask my Republican friends. They will make everyone pay, no matter how poor and sick you are. My rich friends have no problem paying for that. They are proposing some credits for everyone. Well, I, I, I've never been poor in my life. Is that your brand of equality, Mr. President? Don't you see how I'm banning all those Muslims with the stroke of my pen? Oh, Mr. White Eagle, we let all the white people in despite their religious practices. Isn't America big enough for a few more people? Or is this a gimmick to cover up for your not doing anything? Don't you see how busy I am all day on Twitter? You should get a Twitter account, Sitting Bull. You would then be in business, like me. 
I made that mistake. Japanese internment, <coughs> Mr. President. Please don't repeat the same mistake. History would never forgive you for that. Who cares about history? I am history. I'm a businessman. You better keep up my new deal, Mr. Trump. I want to give America not, not your new deal, but my deal. I want to give Iran a my deal. I want to nuke terrorists. I want to make America great. I want to give America a new new deal. I want to give the world a new new deal. It's my deal or no deal. You're all fired. I said you're all fired. Get out of here. Then Nehru transforms into Rao. Kathy, who was watching all this drama behind the curtains, comes out and collects her embryos and syringes. Let's go. <laughs> Give me a second. No, hurry up. Trust me. That's what 